As divers, we all know that there are hundreds of different tools that we can use to aid us with our scuba diving. But which of those tools are actually worth getting? Well, in this video, we're going to go over the nine essential tools that we believe that every diver needs to have before they go diving in the water. Now, before we get started, it's important for me to clarify. We're not going to be talking about your BCD and your reg and your mask and your fins and all the regular stuff that you need to, to use when you go scuba diving. Here, we're going to be talking about scuba accessories. These are things that you can either put in your pocket or that you might need to use before you actually go diving. The first scuba accessory that we recommend is this guy right here. This is a delayed surface marker buoy, and it's an incredibly important piece of equipment that every diver needs to have. And the reason why is because you'll fill this up with air on the surface if you were to come away from the dive boat. And what this is going to do is it's going to let the dive boat, when they're scanning the horizon, see you more easily. Now, when it comes to a DSMB, that's what we call delayed surface marker buoys, we recommend you get the largest one that you can possibly get. Now, I don't know what rig you're using, so I don't know what size pockets you have. We can do a separate video. Let us know in the comments below if it's something that you're interested in. But we can do a separate video on how to stow all this stuff away, because it definitely needs to be out of the way. But you want to get basically the largest one that you can because the larger it is, the more it sticks up out of the water and the more likelihood of being seen you will be from the dive boat. The other thing that's incredibly important with a DSMB, even if at this point you're not completely comfortable with shooting a surface mark, a delayed surface marker buoy from depth, is that it has one of these, an overpressure relief valve, because once you fill this up with air, if it gets completely filled with air and it doesn't have one of these overpressure relief valves, then basically it could burst. So you want to make sure you have one of these and then obviously you want to learn from an instructor how to shoot this from depth and become comfortable with doing so. The next scuba accessory that we recommend is this right here, which is a finger spool. And this obviously goes with our DSMB because if you're going to shoot from depth this DSMB, you're going to need to tie it to something. And this is going to be the line that you'll tie it to. Now, a finger spool has many other uses. The most common use that you're going to have for when you're not using it with a DSMB is if you're taking a dive flag, usually the dive boats give you a pretty crappy reel. So this is a much better option. I highly recommend to all my students that they get themselves a finger spool. And while we're on the topic of finger spools, it should be between 90 to 100 feet. And the reason why, even though you might think you don't need that much line, is because when you go to shoot that DSMB, even if you're just in 40 or 50 feet, if you're in a strong current, it's not gonna go straight up. It's gonna go off with the current in an angle. So you wanna have that extra line so that it can accommodate the current that's gonna take it away from you. And also, if you're using this as a line to attach to a dive flag, it's the same thing. It's not gonna be going straight up and down. You wanna have some leeway so they can run in an angle when you're towing the dive flag behind you. By the way, if you could do us a favor and click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and maybe hit the little bell notification, it really helps us out. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps other divers see videos like this. The next accessory that every diver needs to have is some kind of a cutting instrument. Now, most people end up taking something like this in the water, a knife, but that's not a knife. This is a knife. Now, all kidding aside, for a long time, divers were getting bigger and bigger knives. The whole ramble thing was kicking in. And the reality of the situation is you don't need a huge dive knife underneath the water. You're not gonna go fighting some big monster or anything like that. And in all reality, even this guy, this is not a huge knife, but once you put it in its sheath, this is bulky. Like, where are you gonna put this thing? And I know a lot of divers like to put this on their lower leg, but that's a mess too, because this thing eventually gets loose and then it's just dangling around all over the place. And the reality of the matter is you just need a cutting instrument, not a knife, a cutting instrument. And this is really a personal preference thing, but something like this, just a little sheath, you could put this right on your inflator hose or you could easily stow it away in a pocket. It's not as bulky. And when you're diving underneath the water, 99% of the time, the only thing that you're gonna ever need to cut is maybe some monofilament line. And for that, little shears will do the trick. My personal preference is this guy right here. It's called an easy cut. And similar to a Z knife, I put this on my inflator hose. It's usually out of the way. And you can take this out and basically it's just a little razor blade and you'll cut the monofilament line, put it right back in its sheath. And like I said, normally I have it on my low pressure inflator and it's completely out of the way, but I know it's there if I ever do need it. If you're absolutely, you know, insistent on having some kind of blade to take inside the water, this is really only if you have a private boat or maybe if you're a dive master and you might have an opportunity where at some point you need to cut uh, an anchor line or something. My recommendation is just get a small little folding knife. This is one that I have. I have obviously a, a little snap on here because I'll put this inside of a pocket. 
titanium because these things are notorious for getting rusted out. And for all of these cutting instruments, you need to make sure that if you can, titanium is better, but no matter what it is, stainless steel, it's always marine grade and that you rinse this off after every dive because cutting instruments are notorious for getting rusted out. The next accessory that every diver needs to have is one of these guys right here. Now, this is a scuba compass. Scuba compasses are very different from just about any other compass because it needs to be able to go underneath the water and also it needs to be able to hold its heading as it's wobbling around underneath the water because you're not always going to be perfectly flat. Now, how to choose a scuba compass and how to actually use the compass is a completely separate topic. We do have a video on how to use a scuba compass. I'll link to it below in the description. But what's important for you to know is that you need to have one of these because you might need it in order to do boat checks and there might be specific dives where you need to dive in a specific heading and you need to have the tools to be able to navigate underneath the water. The next piece of gear that we recommend is a hanger for your BCD. And the reason why is when you get home, you're probably gonna rinse off your gear if you didn't already do so with the dive site. But either way, your, your BCD is gonna be moist. You want it to air dry completely. And the best way to do it is to have a secure hanger that you can hang it on. It's also a good way to store if you have the space for it to be able to store your BCD in between dives. And a lot of these hangers you'll see have actual little slots for you to be able to put your regulator on. So you can store your BCD and your regulator on one of these. The next piece of equipment that all divers should have is a pressure checker. Now, the reason why you wanna have one of these is because it's really inconvenient to have to pull out your entire regulator, connect it, pressurize it, depressurize it by using the, the, uh, the regulator. This makes things real simple. You just connect it, and pressurize it, and I can see right now that my tank is full. So this lets you know whether or not your tank is full, how much gas is in there. And in this case, this is a yoke valve, but I have one here also for DIN, so they sell these for DIN or yoke. If you're gonna get one and you have both, I've been diving for a long time, so I have both of these, but I'll just get a DIN pressure checker and you can always use an adapter to check yoke if you need it. Just so you know, we're gonna be leaving links in the description below to all the tools that we're showing you today. If you click on any of those links, we'll make a small commission on your purchase, but that doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps support the channel so that we can keep making videos like this for you. The next things that we recommend everybody have is some kind of a multi-tool and O-rings that they should have inside of a save a dive kit. Now, what goes inside the save a dive kit is a whole topic for another video. Let us know in the comments if you wanna see us create a video like that. But this is the bare minimum. And the reason why is because it's very common to have O-rings blow out of the tank or even from the regulator. And you wanna make sure that you have extra O-rings and that you're able to replace those. It's just a really common thing in scuba diving. The next thing that we recommend everybody have is something that I actually would not have recommended when I first started as a scuba instructor, and it's a backup mask. And I have a funny story to tell you about this. For a long time, I knew divers were taking backup masks inside of a pocket, and I didn't think it was a great idea. I just don't like to have extra things with me in the water. And long story short, I was diving in Sharm El Sheikh on one of the, the, the Zodiacs, and I took my dive mask off, which I shouldn't have done. I put it on the, on the boat floor, and sure enough, Somebody that came, that got picked up right after me, they put their tank down and they smashed my mask into a million pieces. Well, I didn't have a backup mask on that dive. I ended up using a crappy mask that they happened to have on the dive boat. Fortunately, there was only one day left. So as soon as we got back to shore, I went to a dive shop and bought a brand new mask. But I, ever since then, have always had a backup mask inside of my dive bag. And it's something I recommend. You don't necessarily have to take it in the water with you, but I highly, highly recommend you have a backup mask because heaven forbid it smashes like it happened to me or even one of the straps fall off or something, you always have a backup so that you can continue and do your next dive. I have one more tool that I wanna show you. This is just a bonus tool. and It's just a really cool little thing. It's actually a tire inflator. And the way this works is you connect it to your low pressure inflator that would go inside of your BCD and you can inflate any tire with this. It could be a car tire, it could be a bicycle tire. It's just a really cool little tool to have. And I've had this for years and I can't tell you how many times I've used this. So it's just a nice to have. The last tool that we wanna recommend, and obviously there's a lot more that you can use, but we wanna keep this list short, is this guy right here. This is a ratchet strap. And the problem this solves is one that I'm sure that everybody as a diver has probably experienced. And is what do you do with tanks when you need to transport them in your trunk? It's a real pain if they're rolling around all over the place. And I've tried a bunch of different solutions. And the easiest way that I've found to keep my tanks from rolling around all over the place is to take two tanks, put them together. So you take this ratchet strap, you, you strap it around the tanks, you put these two hooks together, you tighten down the ratchet strap. And as you can see at this point, this isn't going anywhere. So you won't have tanks rolling around in your trunk. We just went through nine must have scuba accessories that every diver should have. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you're gonna to wanna to check out our free guide, the eight navigational tools you should never dive without. 
We'll link it over here on your right. In this guide, we go into eight tools that are absolutely essential for every diver to have to assist you when you go navigating underneath the water so that you never get lost on a dive.